Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. I had the opportunity to take a look at uh, what's called the Blue and the Gray, which was a very unique experience, something I heard about for a long time. I was actually invited once, but it ended up raining on me, so I didn't get to go. But with me, I have Don McAllister, president of the uh, Rotary Moore Park Club. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. And also Lyle Pennington from Moore Park Rotary and Max Copenhagen from Camarillo. We'll start with you, Don. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a retired rocket engineer, actually. Uh, been a Rotarian now for five years and had the opportunity this year, 2016-17, to be the president of our, our club and to uh, see what I could do to, to help continuing the, the strong legacy of our club and uh, especially this uh, blue and gray Civil War reenactment event is a major part of our fundraiser and the source of, of things that we uh, try to do for our community. Kind of made your club a little famous on this one too. You guys are well known for this. Yes, it's a unique event and this is the 16th year wow. that, that we've been doing this uh, event at uh, a few different sites in Moore Park, but it's uh, our centerpiece fundraiser for the year. Great, thank you. How about you, Al? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I uh, uh, am a General Motors person. Uh, I, I worked for General Motors for 39 years, retired in California, and uh, my neighbor always pushed on me to come to Rotary, and I travel all over the western part of the United States. So I joined Rotary about 20 years ago now. So. Uh, and I've been involved with uh, this event, the Blue and the Gray, uh, since it started. Uh, and so I, I can remember sitting in a room and us making the decision that this could be a good fundraiser for <laughs> us. So anyway, I'm happy to be here. Great, great, thank you. And Max, how about you? I'm Max Copenhagen. I'm in Camarillo Rotary. I've been in that club uh, since 2008, uh, but I've been a Rotarian for 18 years. And I started uh, reenacting when I was uh, back in Virginia working for the U.S. Forest Service. I had a 35-year career with the U.S. Forest Service. Great. And uh, how did you get involved as a reenactor here? Actually, when I moved back to Washington, D.C. in uh, 1998, I was invited to go out to a, uh, a uh, actually it was in Fairfax County Courthouse. Uh, they had a nice little park around the courthouse. It was what's called a living history. And I saw what was going on there and decided to get the equipment and start doing it myself. And I just brought that skill and that interest with me when I moved back to California. Got it. Okay. Uh, Don, back to you. A lot of people don't know what the blue and the gray actually is. So tell us a little bit about the event. Okay. Uh, if I can, let me show you the, Great. The, a flyer and use that to, uh, to illustrate the Civil War is obviously a, a critical part of the, the history of our nation. And what we have tried to do, of course, the blue and the gray represents the Union and the Confederate uh, uh, Army uh, opponents, uh, to recreate history, to help the children in our community understand the importance of it, what really happened, and to bring it to life. And so we've incorporated uh, interaction with the school kids, especially those grades where Civil War uh, history is taught, like eighth grade, uh, to get involved in this, to, to come and hopefully bring their parents. Uh, we offer on Fridays a special pre-tour for uh, eighth grade students in the local areas where they can come out and visit up to 10 or so different uh, venues where they can talk to the reenactors talk to the soldiers, see the cannons fire, hmm. talk to the cavalry soldiers. So uh, this is, and every year we focus on a different battle within the, uh, the uh, Civil War. And over the course of, of the two days, the Saturday and Sunday, we conduct about three, uh, five battles, three in one day and two on the second, to represent the kind of action that went on at the time. Now the battles, this one here, this year was which, which uh, actual battle was that this, one? This was the road to Antietam. Antietam. So this is the Battle of Antietam. Okay. And the, uh, we try to set our locations on a battlefield 
that is not necessarily identical to, but representative of the kind of conditions, perhaps Max can talk more to that later, the kind of conditions that uh, the soldiers of the time would have faced. Got it, so it's actually uh, more or less than a reenactment of an actual historical event. Right. Down to the details. That's, that's correct, the, oh, okay. the, uh, uh, they would, the different strategies are discussed, uh, the positions of the soldiers uh, on the battlefield, and then there's the live action uh, portion of it with the cannons firing and soldiers and, and uh, the uh, cavalry uh, troops uh, parading as well. Okay. So I noticed you actually have a narrative too going on during the battle itself where uh, the narrator is talking about the battles and the details. That's right, and he's providing context for the history at the time where this battle was within the, uh, the history of the, of the war and the kind of conditions locally uh, and of course the outcome of the battle uh, is uh, an important consideration as right, well. Right. Now Lal, we'll get to you then. Um, tell us a little bit about your, about your role. You were actually kind of the organizer at one point and chair the event. Well, uh, uh, primarily I've taken on the role of being the marketing person. Uh, okay. It was pretty much my background from General Motors to put the marketing materials together to reach out for sponsorships and and, and try to find ways to connect people in the community, uh, businesses in particular, and individuals who would like to support our effort. And uh, um, so we, we do a lot of signs and, and posters and that sort of thing around the community to let people know that this event is going on. Um, so it, it's, it, we, we also have uh, some very key sponsors like Ventura County Star, uh, the Acorn, uh, K Hay, uh, all those are pretty much in-kind sponsors, but they, uh, they, they typically give us a, a pretty robust schedule um, in support of the effort because they, like us, believe that this is really directed to, as Don said, the kids that are studying, studying American history in, uh, in high school. And, and, and some in fifth grade over in Caneo Valley and I think some second graders uh, get involved with uh, Touch on American History. So that's what it's all about. That's the initial thrust. Get to the teachers, get to the students, and try to get them and their families to our event. Got it. Good. Thank you. Max, um, tell us a little bit about what you're wearing and how you, how you ended up with this. What I'm wearing? Well, for one thing, it's all natural materials. I'm wearing cotton, wool, leather, there's some canvas involved and brass, no plastics. So it's uh, very, it's kind of like time travel is, is one of the concepts that I wanted to share is when we, when we do this hobby, this reenacting, we, we go back in time and by having everyone in the camp use only the period correct materials that would have been there in the 1860s, it gives everybody a, a chance to kind of travel back in time. And, um, and so we, we try to do it that way and cooperate that way. Um, I have uh, my cap, starting with my cap, and I'm in the Irish Brigade, so there's a, an Irish emblem here, the harp. Uh, there's unit insignia on here. I'm in the New York 69th um, of the Irish Brigade. Um, this top coat, uh, you may be impressed with these stripes here. They're actually, I'm a private, but um, these stripes are for seniority because I've been doing this so long. <laughs> uh, this is my dog tag, and at the time, dog tags could have been made out of any material, simply so that if you died on the battlefield, somebody could know where to send the body or who to tell. Uh, there's quite a bit of leather. Uh, this here holds up my um, bayonet, <laughs> which is sort of the French style and also a cap box where I keep my little caps that then activate the, uh, the gunpowder for, uh, for the ballistics. I have a belt buckle that holds up my, I have a, a box down here full of cartridges, and lastly I have this little item here, which has no function at all, <laughs> but is a vestige of the armor that they wore during, in the Roman Legion. So this is simply attractive. <laughs> Great, well thank you. Let's jump into some of the pictures because uh, I had the opportunity to grab a few of those for you. And we'll start with the first one. Um, 
Don, tell us a little bit about the event itself. I believe that's a schedule you have. And yes, the, uh, I talked a little bit about that before. The, the primary event is 10 a.m. Saturday to about 5 p.m. Saturday night. Uh, and then Sunday goes from 10 to about 3 o'clock. We do have a sort of a preview on Friday, as I mentioned, for uh, school kids who come out with their teachers and get a preview and uh, they get to speak with the, the various reenactors who are encamped at the time. Oh, nice. We, all of the battlefields in the encampments for the, there's a Union soldier encampment, a Confederate soldier encampment, and a civilian encampment. Now typically during that time, there would be civilian uh, uh, people that would be following the armies and they would be providing food, they would be maybe even selling uniform items. And so in those encampments, you could buy paraphernalia, you could buy uh, souvenirs. Got it. Okay, great. And then uh, the next picture we have some posters and banners. I guess this is Lyle's uh, forte here, getting the people together and doing the promotion of those items, correct? Uh, exactly. Uh, these are what we refer to as battle signs. They're like 24 by 24 and uh, we sell those uh, throughout the community. It's a little bit akin to like you go to a golf tournament, they've got tee signs. Well, we have battle signs okay. and, uh, and it's just a, a way for businesses in town uh, and in the community and individuals uh, to support the effort because uh, most of that just gets into our drops to the bottom line because we don't have a lot of expense in that. Okay. But uh, that, that's what it looks like. You know, we put them up. Thank you. Now we got a few pictures we're jumping into next. Um, actually shows the encampment itself. So um, the first one shows some of the people that could actually walk through it. The next one we actually have um, a setting where you've got the uh, period actors uh, in place, I guess, and set up. Now how many of these... Uh, Camps are there actually three, correct? Right. From what I've heard. The, the the soldiers camp, the Confederate and Union soldiers camp, and then what is called a sutler's camp. And as I mentioned to you earlier, I thought that was a typo the first time I saw it. I thought it was supposed to be settlers, but it's a term used at the time for the civilians who supported through merchandise and and other activities the the uh, army camps. Great. Uh, next picture we have shows an actual. Um, place where they sell merchandise of the period, costumes, things like that. Max, is that where you get yours, or do, is that those are just people following you around there? Actually, I bought my rifle and the bayonet from a reenactor who was retiring from the hobby. Okay. <laughs> and then I bought some, and this was 1998, some by uh, mail order, and I bought well, I guess I bought most of the rest of it. Now you can buy things on the internet. Oh, I buy true. from a place in North Carolina for items that I need um, by, by mail. Thank you. Then we have a picture of, again, part of the camp, and I guess you, you reenact actual meetings, things like that, too, because I believe these were all officers in that one picture. Another picture we have is a picture of you, Max, uh, standing at attention, I guess, watching and guarding your tent there. Um. <laughs> Guilty, but I'm probably uh, in a formation with other people that we can't see, but that's a typical shot. Okay, got it. And then, uh, again, one of the other uh, encampments that was across on the other side of the battlefield, I um, believe it was the Confederate Cavalry, correct? It that's, is the Cavalry. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Good. Next picture, uh, I took this picture because I was kind of impressed. This is the, uh, I guess, the, quote, ambulance, right? Right. It was a horse-drawn ambulance that... Uh, is all part of the reenactment of the of the battle, and uh, there are those reenactors who suffer wounds or worse, and that have to be picked up and taken to uh, care. And among the, the encampments, it would include a hospital-type oh, tent, okay. and uh, typically there's a, a surgeon there that would talk about what he would normally do. I was watching these guys fly across that battlefield. It looked like one of the Disasters would have been one of these guys falling off that thing. They were barely hanging on half the time. <laughs> Next picture um, shows the staging of that, um, the actual um, battle itself. Have pictures of the spectators, then uh, the Union Army is actually getting in position up on top of the mountain. 
Yeah, just prior to the battle, each army would parade up to the battlefield, and that's always uh, a nice uh, visual for uh, the, the crowd. They can see the soldiers up close, uh, applaud as uh, appropriate, and uh, then they take their positions on the battlefield. Got it. And then we have um, some more of the staging and part of the battle now that I was able to get some pictures of. Um, pretty impressive. You got a lot of, uh, I would say, artillery there. There's quite a few cannons you guys drag into these events. Yes, there's uh, on both sides there. You can't see it in these photos, but on the hillside, in this particular battle, on the hillsides on either right. side right. of the battlefield, there were eight to ten uh, cannons that different reenactors had brought in. and. They, of course, fire blanks, but it's, right. it's loud gunpowder it, it based. It's definitely loud. <laughs> right. And uh, then through the rest of the photos we have then showing different phases of the battle itself. Now, how many uh, reenactors do you actually figure you had there? Max, maybe you knew that number. I, I would say 200, if I was guessing. Okay. There might have been maybe 300. Maybe 300 more or less evenly divided okay. uh, between the Confederate and the Union Army. Okay. Seemed uh, like closer to 300. I was trying yeah. to count. I got at least it's, close to 300 there. It's one of the largest battles mm. in Southern California. Wow. And, and then, of course, there are the civilian reenactors right. as well that add that to that. That is true, yeah. Right. And uh, as you go through the rest of the battle pictures, there's one here that I wanted to show. It shows the actual uh, a wood fence that became the dividing line of the, the battlefield mm. itself. I think that's where, uh, Max, you took your break, right? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> what I do, uh, since I've been doing this for a while, is at some point one needs to die. And we call it taking a hit. After the Confederates have been shooting at us at fairly close range for a long time, somebody needs to make it look real. And I might be getting kind of tired, and my weapon might be getting hot. <laughs> so I actually died and fell over and leaned on that fence <laughs> for a good 10 minutes. Yeah, you did see that. Uh, next picture actually shows you getting back up again. So it looked like you had your 10 minutes break there and before it was over. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, next picture shows actually the, the finish, the final part of that, where all of the uh, Reenactors actually are leaving the battlefield. You have the Union leave first, and then the Confederate Army leaves after that one. Pretty impressive seeing seeing all of the uh, costume yes. in there. And I, I shouldn't I should have mentioned that we have horse reenactors as well. There are, there are oh, reenactors oh. bring in uh, these animals from around the state to be part of this, and uh, they're an important part of the the, the simulation of the battle. So that's actually a special group that comes in for that event? Right, and okay. they, uh, we have to figure out who's pulling a cannon and who's pulling a, <laughs> a horse uh, and get them parked in the right place. Now, I notice on, on the, um, the cavalries, there are actually women involved with that too. Is that part, just part of the plan, part of the team? Yeah, and th these are, you know, as Max probably can talk about, these are, it's a family hobby, so if you've got a reenactor your family is more more than likely involved in in the logistics and the transportation and all that okay. kind of thing. Okay. And there are horse women. Now they don't look like women. They try to disguise who they are. <laughs> but there was, um, I would say, thousands of women who went to war with their mm -hmm. brothers or their husband or just because they wanted to. Really? And they didn't know it unless they got wounded and they had to uh, do some surgery on them. Wow. So it's quite well documented. It is uh, something you don't hear about, though. In, and we, we have uh, women in our unit, mm -hmm. uh, half a dozen out of a, the mm -hmm. uh, unit I'm in of about 30. There's there's half a dozen women who enjoy doing it. Now, um, your group then, do they travel all together? Or are you always the same group, the same? We, we camp together, uh, but we're spread out between Barstow and San Diego. I'm about the farthest north. Uh, so there's about 30 of us in the New York 69th. Okay. But we do enjoy camping together, which is one of the, the three big reasons why we do this. And how long are you usually there at one of these sites? Over the weekend. Over the weekend? Most people come on Friday and stay until Sunday afternoon. So they'll come and set up on Friday, have a, a simple meal, and then by Saturday morning they'll be all set up, 10 o'clock or so, cars have to be out of the way, you have to hide anything plastic, and it looks real for the next 
36 hours. Very good. Last picture um, I have is actually one with uh, Abraham Lincoln. So, yeah, This gentleman has been reenacting as Abraham Lincoln for as long as I can recall. In addition to going to uh, Civil War reenactment events, he would also go to schools. Oh. So we have uh, people who represent the political figures of the time who give the speeches and, and talk about what was going on around the conflict in the political uh, world as well. There's a reenactor for General Grant and, uh, and they have a debate which we stage at the courtyard uh, in between battles and they talk about uh, their various positions and uh, again it's part of learning the history of the event. And by the way, that guy's pretty tall. I just didn't think that he's a big guy. Not even counting his hat. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> not even counting his hat. He was large. He's been with us the whole time, Dan Ansel. Uh, he, he's just done a wonderful job. I, I kid him all the time. I said, you're more Abraham Lincoln than he was. You know? <laughs> I think so, you're right. <laughs> uh, so when I, when I think about Abraham Lincoln, I think That's of Dan. That's his picture you see. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he's on the one on the $5 bill there, huh? Right. <laughs> The um, event itself, tell us a little bit about it. Um, what are the reasons why the Moore Park Club got involved with it? Is it for the education component, community connection? Yeah, it's really about, you know, the old saying, if you want to uh, avoid the, the historical problems of the past, you need to study it and learn from it. And so we've, this whole event, uh, yes, it's, it's exciting and there's cannons firing and there's cavalry, but it's really about bringing to life a critical part of our history to talk about the horrors of war, the heroics of war, all of that is a part of it, but it, it takes what could be a dry textbook subject and makes it into something real for our, our children to learn. Yeah, that was one thing that was fascinating I found out when I was there actually the first time. First, the controversies of those people that come over there and go, you know, it's it's promoting violence. Actually not, it's actually reenacting a part of our history, so it's completely different from what most people anticipate it to be. I found it quite fascinating, and um, Max, yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, I was gonna mention, it, it's a matter of giving you perspective on what happened. History isn't a matter of dates and right or wrong, it's a matter of what happened, how could it be different, what's the, the big story, what's the context, uh, and I believe these, these uh, opportuni are opportunities to give the youth, while they're in school, perspective on what has happened so they can make better decisions in the future. And there's also, it's not only the history of the battles, it's the history of technology, it's the history of medicine. Uh, one of the, I wouldn't call him a settler, but there's often, at the events I go to, there's uh, a doctor, I, I think he's actually a dentist, but he collects medical tools uh, that were used back in the 1860s and I have actually volunteered to lay on his operating table and he'll pretend to amputate a limb and and do all this and this was before they understood there were germs so they would use the same knife over and over on many many wounded soldiers so medical technology uh, the technology of machinery it's, it's just fascinating and it's a it's a good lesson Part of the uh, lesson that we talked about, Lyle brought this one up, was the fact that you want to try and encourage or bring in youth, school specific. Um, how successful have you been recently? Uh, well, I, it, it's always uh, been the key cornerstone of our whole campaign from a marketing standpoint is to try to touch base with all of the uh, eighth grade teachers, primarily in Ventura County that study American history. And we've got quite a collection. And each year we try to push deeper out into Los Angeles with that group of people. Uh, probably the best way to describe it is, uh, as Max uh, commented, it's not just dates and, and, and things that happen in history. And that's what the kids read. But one of our former superintendents of school when he first went to our Civil War reenactment and, and he could see what those kids were learning and, and, and all, he was just bubbly coming out of there saying, this is bringing American history 
to life for these kids. And when we formally had it in, in November, he loved the idea of the kids being able to uh, go to uh, class uh, in the springtime, having seen what it really looked like at the American Civil War. Real quickly, um, back to you here, Don. You do uh, this every year uh, as a fundraiser. How much do you actually raise and how much work is involved well, with that? Well, there's a huge amount of work. As you can tell, it's, it's a very complex event involving uh, a lot of people. And so our big challenges uh, in recent years have been acquiring the appropriate site and going through regulatory and, and insurance and all those kind of processes and for organizing all of the volunteers. And we really thank the, the reenactor community for supporting this. Uh, this year we moved it from the November time frame to April, which helped us uh, uh, with the fire department for, as you can tell, we have a lot of things that could be uh, detrimental in the springtime, especially in a rainy year like this one has been helpful. So uh, we plan to keep doing it. We're gonna learn every year and try to do it better every year. Sounds good. Now, um, rotary-wise, um, as the fundraising comes in, do you have specific earmark areas where you try and invest that back in the community? Or? Yes, we, we look at uh, supporting both local and international uh, uh, organizations or, or needs. Uh, uh, one of the biggest local needs uh, for us is the Boys and Girls Club of Moore Park. We are primary sponsor of their good work. Uh, we also participate through donations to the Rotary Foundation, uh, the global grants, the fight against polio, water projects, uh, maternal uh, uh, health and welfare, and uh, perhaps peace and conflict resolution uh, by the learning that, that yeah. comes from this uh, reenactment. Yeah. And how many people do you think you get as far as uh, attendance-wise over the weekend? It, it's, uh, we think we had about 3,000 a day wow. this, this uh, last year. And you know, we'd love, to, we'd love to double that. We'd love to double our reenactor uh, participation. Uh, the, uh, the event is key to the site and uh, we hope to get a, in the Great. future a permanent site. Well, thank you very much for putting these shows together. I mean, it's outstanding. You guys are doing quite a bit, not only for Moore Park, but actually bringing history back. Max, thank you all for joining us too. And with that, thank you very much for joining us. Take a look at next year, uh, the blue and the gray. Outstanding, I had a great time there and look forward to that one. Thank you and we'll see you next time. <laughs>